Aloha. Welcome to Talk Story with John Waihe'e. We got another exciting show for you today. As you know, I love to talk politics from time to time. Can't help it. But, uh, you know, anybody can give you the content on what's happening, what's the latest bill that passed and so forth. What we, what we show you here are the inner workings of what's happening. And today's uh, session is about the state of our nation. The state of our nation, you know, what's happening. And really, the state of our nation and our, one of our most precious rights, the First Amendment, or the Free Speech Amendment, the ability to, uh, you know, speak freely your mind. So my guest today is a person that I record, I, I, you know, I have the greatest uh, <laughs> respect for. He okay, is my me. former communications director. A lifetime friend uh, and uh, my former tele telecommun I mean, communications director, who is now a special advisor to uh, Senator Brian Schott, which makes him one of the big high muckamucks mm -hmm. in this uh, in this world. <laughs> so he can, t well, you know, he's he can tell us everything. His name is Chuck Friedman. Welcome, Chuck. Hello. It's always a pleasure to see you. Hello, Governor. Good to see you. You know, this show spun out of a lunch that we recently had. And you and I were talking about the state of the political affairs in the country and in the state. And one of the most uh, intriguing things that's happening to our nation is the relationship between what we call the media and, and government. And, uh, and I don't only mean that in terms of likes and dislikes, I mean in terms of medium as well. Uh, what are some of your thoughts about where we are uh, on, you know, on the state of the media and, and government and what's happening with the First Amendment? Well, uh, I think it was Arthur Miller uh, once, once said that a great newspaper is a nation communicating to itself. Uh, oh, great line. It is a great line, and that was probably like 50 or 60 years ago, and it really doesn't work anymore. Mm. Uh, the notion that there's sort of a single system news media through which the truth will flow, uh, I, I think you'd have to go somewhere far into the fields to find a Rip Van Winkle who believes that's true anymore. Right. So the challenges we have today are with a multiparous set of media that do all kinds of things where you, life is more and more like a chat room where you find information that kind of substantiates yeah, and affirms what you believe. Yeah, but the trouble with chat rooms is that it's not, those uh, chats are not necessarily uh, verifiable. Right. And, and so how is truth deciphered from? Yeah, I, I think that's, that's the, that is the fundamental question. And, and there's, there's a term called confirmation bias where, where there are stories written or things said to substantiate the feelings of whoever the audience is, as opposed to telling the audience both sides of the story and letting them kind of figure out what the truth is. We seem to have lost the capacity well, to do that, not entirely, but largely. Well, you know, but uh, I always was, was as you know, suspicious about this uh, desire to tell both sides of the story, let's say, you know, say we do both, tell both sides and the people decide and so forth. When, when you obviously know one side is bogus. So how do you make, if you, if you as a reporter, as a media source, uh, anyone out there, know absolutely that one side of the discussion is, is bogus, uh, you know, isn't propping, propping that side up to look like 50% of an argument, in a sense, bias? Two things on that. One, I think with most issues, there really are two sides, and what a, a good reporter's job is to fairly flesh out either and come out with the, the best version, the, mo the most appropriate version of, 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 of the facts. Um, but there is, you know, also a problem with, with uh, with false equivalency, that's the term I, you know, where... Good term. Where, I'm, I'm, this is an educational... Well, sorry practice. to use the big words on, on the former <laughs> yeah, governor. Okay. You, you look pretty good at some big words yourself. But, <laughs> but the notion of false equivalency, where, where um, 
let's take something like climate change, where there are 97% of the scientists in the world and everybody who's got an informed opinion has identified that climate change Even is, Putin. Even Putin has identified that climate change is real. And, and that, but there are a few people who are somehow trying to say that the Earth is flat on that issue. Well, you really don't need to report both sides of the story very much. It uh, can be an assumed fact that climate change is real. What you want to do about it, how you want to manage it, how much you want to put into it, those are all real issues. But for some people who want to deny that climate change is real, there are news operations which will tell them stories that falsely equalize or fa make a false equivalent out of the notion that there, there is no such thing as climate change and there is climate change. And that's another tool that we you know, sort of tripped into in this modern age. Uh, where have you gone, Walter Cronkite, is what I ask. Yeah, well, but, you know, okay, so we got all these people covering all these things, and we have the, uh, the president. Uh, that's it's call, calling uh, people who bring up a, uh, a, a, an issue that either he doesn't agree with or that he doesn't believe that particular side of an argument and, and says that all of this is fake news. Yeah. So what's, what's, what's you know, how does, the, how does the fifth estate, the great protector of American free speech, the, you know, what we, we grew up being told that this is our way to, to know the facts, how do you survive in an era when uh, whatever you say is being characterized as uh, fake? Fake news. Yeah, a very serious challenge. I, I, obviously, I have democratic leaning, so I, I, well, should, yeah, I, should, I should declare my, my prejudices such as they are. But I think we're in real trouble there. I think that, that what has happened is, I think that the, the news media as a, as, a, as a totality wrestled with all of this during the primary campaigns when lots of stuff was flying out there, a lot of invective and ad hominem and kind of not factually based information during the primary. And the news media was trying to figure out how to deal with all that. And they sort of leaned toward the entertainment value of it all. And, right. and everything got like Fox fired out. Well, dust has settled down a little bit. I don't bit. understand the term, fox fire. Fox fire, a lot, a lot of brush fires, you know, just a lot, everything sort of blew. And, but they like, went with are it. Are you changing that description from fox fire, fire to Fox fire brush? is actually a false, it's something you see at sea, right? It oh, I thought it was something light. you say about a television channel. No, oh, <laughs> ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't I know. I was not referring to Roger Ailes when I, when <laughs> okay, I was talking well, about but fox fire. But, I mean, the, the point is that, it, so it, it, what we saw during the primary was the battle between entertainment value of news and sort of trying to draw an audience through the entertainment value and the challenge with no but what do you see when you see Sean Spencer uh, or Sean Spicer or whatever his name is standing up there defending something that everybody in the room no, it isn't so. I, and then have his boss, like this is the firing of James Comey's incident, and then have his boss come out a couple hours later. Say the opposite. Say the exact opposite. How does that, what does that do to our institutions? It, it, well, I think it's, you know, it makes me think of the days, I, so for five years I was your communications director, and we lived in a world that was seemed to be a lot more fair and balanced than the one we're living in now as yeah, far as reporters think so. go. I think it was. But I always had, and I sometimes spoke for you, and I was in, this, in situations like Sean Spicer, although you did a lot more of your own talking than Donald uh, Trump seems to be doing. But I always had this moment in the back of my mind where, where, where you were in front of the media, and if somehow you, you, you just got off target and started saying things that weren't right, I was going to do my Fred Sanford imitation and clutch my heart and go, it's the big one, it's the big one, <laughs> because there was no way out. When I look at Sean Spicer, almost every time I see him, I just want to say, it's the big one, Elizabeth, it's the big one. I mean, it's just, it, it is a, it's sad for anybody who's honestly tried to be in communications for a government agency or for business, for a nonprofit, or, who tries their best to describe the policy and be on spot with the truth to watch the suffering every day that we see of that, of that, the, the, the well, White House press the, the, So, I, you know, I, I read someplace, actually, recently, that 
And I think it was uh, from one of the, uh, well, it was from the, the statement, I can't remember exactly who it was from, but it was from a person who was uh, the press person for the White House, I think it was for Obama, maybe Bush. And, and in his statement, he said the most important element of this job is uh, maintaining credibility. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I, I, did you find that to be true when, when you were doing it? I mean, it's, it's So we lived in a day when, and this is a Honolulu, where there were two daily newspapers. Um, the, the downstairs of the state capitol, which is featured here in the, in the picture, uh, was filled with reporters, some better than others, but all of them basically trying to get to the truth. It was jam-packed with newsprint reporters, AP, Honolulu Advertiser, Star Bulletin, and then during the legislative session, another room packed with television reporters. It was a rare experience to find somebody who wasn't really trying to get the story and get the truth, and that was roughly the equivalent. You would occasionally find somebody who was a little bit so average. Are you saying that it was things. a different age? I think it was a different age, and, and, so I, and, and I think that it, it, it sort of policed itself. To a very large extent, it policed itself. What's happened now is that the technology has all changed. You know, when I was your communications director, I sat in a room that had a little machine called a teletype. And when some kind of hot news from the mainland came through, if it was really hot, it would go ding, 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 and a little printed piece well, would come well, out. Well, what happens now? You, you what happens now is everybody knows this information well, before, you, before the communications director does. But everybody gets a tweet. And everybody, everybody gets a tweet. Uh, there's an Instagram. There's all of this stuff. You would have been a tweeter. Well, maybe, maybe not. I, I don't know. But I, I'm now a texter. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know if I, I've graduated to tweeting, you know, that might be a little bit beyond me, beyond but the, the fact of the matter is, is that there are more ways to communicate. That's right. And for politicians, it seems, at least it seems to be working, that one of the foundations of communication is like tweeting. It's less than, uh, it's even less than a 30 second commercial. Yeah. You know, and so you, you, you say something. I mean, uh, the President of the United States goes out and he says, and this is what I don't understand. I mean, I don't understand how this all happens, uh, all functions and still, you know, becomes the, the norm for our country. He goes out there and he, he accuses the mayor of London for uh, telling, uh, for, with a falsehood. Yeah. With a falsehood. And... <laughs> His people knowing that that's a falsehood, which is immediately called to their attention. And he, and he, and he, he sort of gets it. away with it. Yeah, he gets, he no, he not sort of gets away with it, he gets away well, with it. Well, the question is, where is the sort so of... So where is the media? Where, where is, is the, the media, and, and at what point do the lines cross between entertainment and, inform and real information and real journalism, and at what point to do the newsrooms and... and uh, the people who are writing the news realize that we, we're in a paradigm now that's way outside anything ever, anybody ever imagined. And it is a challenge to the First Amendment. And it's, it, you know, it's, to me, it, it's personally a very frightening thing. Uh, but I think the day of reckoning is, is already here. Well, we're going to come back. Uh, we're going to uh, take a break right now. But we're going to come back. We're going to talk about the First Amendment and what is freedom of speech. We're also going to talk about media as a business and whether right. it can survive in this type of uh, situation. So, everyone, we're going to take a short break. We've got a great show coming, for, uh, coming up for you, more discussion. And here we are. Welcome 
Welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'i. We've got an exciting guest today, my former communications director and current special advisor to Senator Schatz, Mr. Chuck Friedman, who, who by the way, is well known in the Hawaiian media circles. So those, if there are any uh, of his colleagues out there listening to this show, which you do from time to time, uh, this is our phone now, hotline number, 415-871-2474. Give us a call. Chuck will be really happy to answer it. Now, you know, one of the problems with what's happening on the national scene is this tendency, it seems like, what, what you have are these news channels out there all trying to get a story and so forth. And then you have the, ch the President of the United States handpicking his mm -hmm. favorite. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, what, you, you know, what, he, what, what happens is they get stories. They get stories. They get told, I'm, uh, I'm going to do something, I'm going to say something, or whatever, which is a tremendous advantage uh, ahead of time, it seems. Um, or at least they get the explanation. They get the exclusive. Yeah, which brought up the question, and I, and I had um, an earlier guest where we discussed this whole issue, and I said, you know, wh what that does is that at some point, your... Uh, media outlet, whatever it is, NBC, ABC, whatever it is, uh, it survives as an economic entity because it, uh, it has the news. It, it gets things out there. And when you have a president, in a sense, supporting somebody else's business, how long can you survive without succumbing to the temptation of being friends with him? He also likes to wave his bony finger at the New York Times and other outlets and say, saying basically, your ratings are down, your, your sales are down, your, your, your destiny is marked. So it's kind of a nanny But you know what's interesting, uh, and this is going to just direct for a second, is that the New York Times and uh, Washington Post have actually seemed to me gain credibility because of their stridentness. They're, they're acting like the old warriors of the First they, Amendment. They are picking up the, the banner. Um, whether that, you know, in the long term, whether, whether that, that strengthens affects them, them or, or not, the, as a business. It's a business, we don't know. Because for sure there is a business for the, the rest of America that cares not uh, what the New York Times has to say or the Washington Post has to say. That's all way far east of them. In, but in what's every... interesting is that their stories seem to be the lead for the media outlets that are not in the favored, uh, uh, you know, favored uh, status uh, from, the, from the executive branch. In, in other words, they're not from— I, I hate to defend Fox. Fox News at all. Fox has some portions of their news where they're actually reporting news. Most of it is, is, is editorial, and, and, and some of it is mixed in. You know, unfortunately, I think a lot of the media outlets are mixing editorial opinion, news, content, and it's become so jumbled up that it's, it's understandable the American public would start to get confused about what's a story and what's an opinion. Um, but Fox has made chop suey out of it all, uh, for sure. But, um, and they're, they're, you know, not to make ratings the end, end of everything, but from a business standpoint, ratings determine especially, well, for television, it's, it's ratings, and for newspapers, it's circulation. It, it determines, you know, if you have a viable business or not. Right, absolutely. So the, there's a lot of string pulling there, and where it all ends up, you know, you can say it's about, it's about the newsrooms. To some extent, it's going to be about the American public and whether they decide at some point that But what the, that they want the, the truth. President's, okay. Does the president, uh, favoring one particular news outlet, actually affect the economics of the business. I, I believe it does. It has for a while with Fox, uh, but their ratings are starting to slip. So there may be, a ref the point is that like, you know, for every action, well, there's an is, equal and opposite reaction. There is some refract refractory stuff going on here that, that we don't really know about, just like we didn't really know when the primary started. That, that, e that entered the entertainment aspect of news was going to dominate so much that we would have a hard time coming back to the truth and to facts. And, and we are still having a hard time doing that. Do we have faith in the American public? Uh, what H.L. Mencken say, nobody ever went broke underestimating the taste of the American people. 
you know, maybe not. Maybe well, this know. is the end uh, of Kushner said that uh, Trump called Republicans stupid. And they said they'll believe anything he says. Yeah, that you could shoot so he could shoot somebody in the middle of New York yeah, City. Yeah, so, I mean, is that what we're saying? Is that our public's that bad? Yeah, I'm not, I don't believe so. But I'm not as fervent in my ideology as I was in the past. Some awful things have happened in the last couple of years. Uh, well, and I, not to bemoan it. Yeah, it's no. going to be It's going to be up to the newsroom. There is a new day. You say there is going to be a there new day. There better be. Or, <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> there better be. Yeah. Well, no, I'll tell you why. Okay, look, look. You know, our own little history in Hawaii, we had a mayor called Frank Fossey, right? That's right. And what he did was, he, in one of his early press conferences, he got really irritated by a reporter called Richard Barreca. Threw him out. Which, by the way, you know, has... has very have, understandable. Uh, For those yeah, of us oh, who yeah, know Richard... Oh, yeah, we know Richard. It we, was a very we understandable the, we thing. We commend the emotional well, I aspect know, of I, it. I, I don't uh, know. But not the action itself. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So he threw him out. Yeah. And that went to our courts. Yeah. And the Hawaii Supreme Court says you can't do that. You cannot exclude. You cannot decide which news outlets right. you feed your news to. Right. Do you think there's any hope that we'll get to that situation in the United States? You know, that, that is a good, that's a good question. And will, will there be at some point a real fulcrum kind of challenge as, as we teeter-totter our way through the, the idiocy of this? Will there be some point where this is it's something that can be very dramatically challenged in court, in, in a court or in the court of public opinion in some dramatic, real way. And the only way we're gonna find that out is if the journalists stick to their knitting. Stick to their guns. And we may have, and you heard it first here, folks, we may have a Bereka too. We, we may have <laughs> On the national level, right? Well, okay. I think we should send Richard, Richard to Washington and <laughs> yeah. everybody a favor. Yeah, 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 well, yes. Nah, I love no, you, Richard. No, it's a joke. He's, he's mellowed, you know. He's but very don't mellowed. tell him I said no, that because either. he gets really irritated to Richard hear it. Right. But anyway, right. uh, what, what I do want to say, though, is that what's interesting is at least uh, MSNBC and, and, and uh, CNN, I, uh, they have these commercials. Where we will not stop, yeah. you know, asking the question. Yeah, we the uphold the First Amendment. I, these are news media coming out and doing that. So they're promoting themselves as truth sayers. I think that's good if they're uh, well, establishing it's also that as a good value. Because if they in fact uphold the First but, Amendment, but there are problems with the way CNN and, and and all the broadcast news stations are operating. They shoot themselves in their own foot. Oh, really? All too frequently. Yeah. Let's not. Much as we believe in the rights of no, free what, press, what, what, what are they, let, well, tell, tell I, me, yeah. I think that, that they have carried on with the entertainment value of journalism oh, way too far themselves. And now they want so to show that they're reporting? You, tur you, you turn on CNN to get coverage of the news, and you get people who are really stupider than your next-door neighbor talking but, about things. Not that you necessarily have a stupid next-door neighbor, but, I mean, you could get better information from talking to Miss Fukuda across the, the the fence than from some of these really You, you mean the talking people. head type people? But yeah, come panels on. of people who, Corey Lewandowski, who was fired as Corey Trump, Lewandowski Trump was campaign, Trump's manager. campaign manager. He was fired. By Trump? C by Trump. For CN being too aggressive. CNN hired him even though he had, he, he was fired, but he had a, 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 a clause in the firing that didn't allow him Okay. To say anything negative, and CNN hired him as as a commentator. Yeah, because they they, they could they because had to it was buy entertainment a, a, and it was yeah. news. And okay, that's so idiotic. now let's get they to shoot the, themselves in their let's own get court. to the First Amendment before because yeah. we, we got only a few more minutes, and I do want to go to Portland. I want to go to Portland. I want to go to Washington State. I want to st and the state of the First Amendment in this country. Now, when you and I were in the universities, there was this free speech movement coming out of Berkeley where the idea was the ability to say what you want. And yet, when in, in this day and age, uh, here we are talking about the First Amendment, the necessity for the media to exercise it, and w this whole concept of w what is free speech is uh, Who's affecting allowed on the campus? Country. Who's allowed, Who's on, allowed campus? on campus? Yeah. Or, for example, uh, the, uh, the right wing, the outright yeah, using I, free speech. For ex uh, in in uh, they have Trump. They have Trump free speech rallies. 
And the idea is to go up front and call all the media corrupt and so forth and so on. And, 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 and we have thousands of people saying, you can't say that. Yeah. So where, what, where, where is this? That is not, that's not shouting fire in a crowded theater. It's, it's a, it's, I think that's what's going on, 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 on some of the, ac in the academic institutions where they're shunning certain speakers, typically very conservative alt-right speakers. Yeah, speakers it's, that is a bad is a bad thing for America. It's, well, it's the other side of what we're talking about, and we shouldn't just disdain. But it. The, the people who are shunning these people are people who are are pointing out that the people they are shunning are in fact uh, you know using vile words and doing things and standing for bad philosophies and the like. Now, so you. Uh, and yet, that's exactly what uh, many of us were accused of there's way back in the 60s. There's a line you can't cross, but I think you and I would both agree that it's not the role of academia to protect students from alt-right thinking and ideology. That, that's, they, they shouldn't be protected so why, from it. Yeah, they should be, shouldn't have be the opportunity to be exposed to it. They don't have to go and listen to it. But th but those speakers should not be shunned unless they are saying something that's flat. Well, let's say they're saying fire something in a that, 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 that's that, that's that's awful. You know, maybe not fire in a crowded theater, but that that's awful, and uh, and people don't like to hear it. Um, back there was a time of, uh, that the way that you would handle that kind of people is don't go. Yeah. Just, uh, I mean, boy, boy, yeah. do like a personal boycott. You know, I don't want to hear that stuff. But today, what we seem to want to do is confront it, and, and in a sense, act. Uh, it's like two I don't groups even of know Nazis it's getting it. together. It's, 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 I don't even it's confrontation. It, it's actually denial, mm. it, which may be worse. Just well, deny, confrontation, deny, right. their confrontation. Right, deny their right to speak. Gee, I'm spending a lot of time defending the alt right here. But I think that just as important as everything else we've talked about today is well, that the First Amendment shines through. Well, it's always easy to talk about the First Amendment when you're defending, your and side. believe it or yeah, not, yeah. the uh, star advertiser. It's a little bit harder to defend the First Amendment when you're talking yeah. about the Hawaii Free Press, you know, who writes these articles that are, uh, yeah. you know, you, you think they ought to be nuts or but certified. You know, but you know, Governor, your values don't mean anything till they're tested. Right, and we are being tested We're right being now. Tested. And so, if we Big really time. want an amendment to protect us against ex excesses, uh, like of Donald of the executive branch, the other side of that coin is that we've got to be able to accept the fact that somebody else may have a different opinion. That's right. You know. Well, anyway, this has been an interesting show. I want to thank you so much for coming on. You are my media touchstone. I, I, and, and, and no one has taught me more about communications than you. So thank you, Chuck Friedman, special advisor to Senator Schatz. Thank you, Governor. Pleasure oh, to welcome. be here. <laughs>